Hey there guys, and welcome to every episode of The Simpsons Season 21 Reviewed. We are well and truly in the newest era of the show now, and there is still a dozen seasons to go before I'm caught up. There is just so many episodes of this show, isn't there? Incidentally, this was actually the season which made The Simpsons become the longest running American primetime television series. Other than that though, I don't have much to say about the production of this season. But there was 8 holdover episodes from season 20, which is kind of interesting. That kind of makes me expect a similar season to the last, and if so I will take that, given that last season was decent. Anyway, enough of me speculating, let's find out shall we? Season 21, Episode 1, Homer the Whopper. Comic book guy's comic book hero, Everyman, becomes a big hit in Springfield and he agrees to a movie version only under the condition that Homer plays a role of every man. So my trivia for the season opener is that the episode aired right before the premiere of the Cleveland show. And my best moment here was comic book guy playing hardball with the Hollywood executives. So I gave the season opener a 2 out of 5. Right. So we all know The Simpsons has done this superhero type plot a few times before and done it much better than this I might add. I never really got invested in Homer playing this superhero character, and all of Homer's character stuff about losing weight just felt so shallow here. It was also silly how he kept putting on and then losing so much weight throughout the episode. It was so unrealistic, and it took me completely out of the moment. Also, that character played by Seth Rogen was just, well, dear me. Now admittedly, I don't like Seth Rogen anyway, but of course I would be willing to look past that if his character was any good. But I just don't know what they were going for. The only joke he brought to the table was saying contradictory things to everyone. Even outside of that, the jokes here were just so obvious and bland. Indeed, the only thing which saved this episode from being a one was Comic Book Guy's appearance. It had a few nice lines, and they were all very in character for him. The way he goes, thank you, I repeat, thank you, to the Hollywood people until he gets his way was quite satisfying. One of the rare instances where you actually root for him. As nice as Comic Book Guy was here though, he was not good enough to make this an enjoyable episode as an overall package. Season 21, Episode 2, Bart Gets a Z. After one of Bart's pranks goes wrong, it ends up getting Mrs. Krabappel fired. Bart has a lingering guilt over the situation, so tries to help her get her job back. My trivia here is that the Blue Bronco is an obvious parody of the real life energy drink, Red Bull. And my best moment was the montage of Edna's daily life. This episode gets a 3 out of 5. So this is another story to get added to the list of Bart and Edna ones. This one was solid enough, but predictably does not sit alongside greats like Bart the Lover. In fairness to this one, it at least tries to differentiate itself from its predecessors. You have bits like the montage of Edna's life at the start, which was well done. It really kind of gets you to appreciate the routine of her life, and it sheds more of a light on why she acts the way she does. You could also very much tell that this was a modern era episode, with all the focus on cell phones and technology. I guess I'll just have to get used to that kind of thing as we progress throughout the HD era. Once Edna got fired, it was the typical staff of Bart trying to cheer her up. This works at first, with the muffin store, but that unraveled pretty quickly. On one hand, it felt a bit jarring, but I guess it does succeed at showing what teaching really means to her deep down. Edna snapping at Bard was okay I guess, but I never really got much emotional impact from it personally. Maybe that's because the whole ending sequence is just a bit rushed. I mean I get rid of this new teacher by making him drunk out of nowhere. It was just a bit anticlimactic. The jokes were very hit and miss. I did like Flanders ordering at the muffin store in his typical gibberish, so Bart just gives him a banana. Some of the stuff with the answer book was also decent. On the flip side of that though, you had Homer's crying, which may have been well acted, but I just think it was a bit OTT, and as such I found it a bit annoying. There were also several other bland attempts at jokes which fell flat. Overall though, I think this was an average episode, and it was definitely good to see Mrs. K in a big role again, if nothing else. Season 21, Episode 3, The Great Wife Hope. Marge takes issue with how obsessed with MMA the men and boys of Springfield have become. Soon, the promoter challenges Marge to a fight, and if she wins, he promises to shut down the shows in Springfield. So my trivia here is that the episode title is a reference to the 1970 film, The Great White Hope. 
and my best moment was the ending with Bart and Lisa. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I'm not surprised that The Simpsons dipped into the UFC. After all, this was around the time that MMA was really starting to take off in popularity. This was nowhere near as good as the boxing episode in season 8, but it was an okay watch. Now, the actual storyline with Marge fighting this guy over the company was just silly if you think about it. I mean, why on earth would he randomly put his business on the line? Also, once Marge beats him, that's just kind of it. We never find out what came out of that situation. The bits I liked best here were the scenes of Marge training, whether it be with a pathetic Mr. Burns or a tattooed Dredrick Tatum. The jokes were pretty hit and miss here, but I do give them credit for incorporating a lot of different townspeople throughout the course of the episode. And as I said, the ending with Bart and Lisa deciding to fight it out was kind of cool. It was also surprising when Lisa laid him out with one shot in the middle of the credits. Season 21, Episode 4, Treehouse of Horror 20. The three short stories this year are Dial M for Murder, or press hashtag to return to main menu, Don't Have a Cow Mankind, and There's No Business Like Mo Business. So this episode contains parodies of various movies. These include Strangers on a Train, North by Northwest, 28 Days Later, Children of Men, among others. And the best thing here for me was the whole final story being presented as a play. I really think that was a good choice. This year's Halloween special gets a 4 out of 5. This was a solid episode throughout. All three parts bring something different to the table and varied in tone. The intro had some good references to old classical movies and that whole theme from the intro was carried into part 1 as it was all done in black and white. The choice to do it in black and white in this kind of Hitchcock parody was a good choice as it definitely added to the atmosphere and the back and forth between Bart and Lisa here was pretty good. It was only fitting that Bart got a taste of his own medicine in the end. The second segment was probably the weakest as the whole zombie premise is overdone, not only on The Simpsons but also in media as a whole. It was okay though for what it was still. I did laugh at Reverend Lovejoy's reaction to the consumption of a saviour comment. And I think Bart was having a little too much fun bathing in Lisa's food. The final part slightly beats out the first to be my favourite. It was very meta to have the whole thing be a play that the residents of Springfield are watching, but they pulled it off well. The gay Homer song was far better than it had any right to be, and the gag of Homer not being ready for the scene was funny. The ending where Homer comes back to confront Mo was only okay, but I was not too disappointed by it. I was already won over by the uniqueness of the part, Overall, this season's Treehouse of Horror was a solid one, just like last year's. Hopefully, this is the start of a trend back in the right direction for these specials. Season 21, Episode 5 The Devil Wears Nada Carl receives a promotion at the plant and makes Homer his executive assistant. His constant requests cause Homer to be away from Marge, straining their relationship. So much trivia about this one is that Homer, Lenny and Carl dreamed about driving coloured Mini Coopers in a power plant. This is a reference to the Italian job. And my best moment was the moment between Ned and Marge. This one is a 3 out of 5. I think the characterization here was good. Everything else? Not so much. To start out with the story, it was a weird one because the Marge model calendar thing felt like it was going to be a big deal but it ended up fading away without any opposition at all. Instead, the focus shifted to Homer doing jobs for the power-drunk Coral, which makes him neglect Marge. I don't mind that story shift per se, but the fact that the whole Act 1 Marge stuff was never resolved was a bit odd for sure. The good bits here, as I said, were the interactions between the characters. I like how Coral had this change when he was promoted. It put Homer in a hard position. After all, it was not his fault that he was not spending time with Marge. As we can see that he wanted to, he just could not get a break. This is a rare instance when Homer is actually portrayed in a sympathetic light in regards to his relationship with Marge. As for Marge and Ned, it was a bit silly how it all came about, but I did like their scenes together. They have always kind of got on well in the show, so seeing that kind of pushed to its limits here was interesting. It was also believable that Marge would be a bit tempted to be honest, given the situation with Homer. The scene where they almost kiss is quite a big moment too. And it's something to remember this episode by. The ending was of course fine with Homer fixing things up with Marge. The jokes do let this episode down massively though. As I just did not find this episode funny. The one about the kind of terrorist guy getting pictures of Lenny for his plan was the only decent one. 
Season 21, Episode 6 Pranks and Greens Groundskeeper Willie tells Bart about Andy Hamilton, a former student who was an even better prankster than he is. Bart, desperate to meet him, decides to track him down. So a bit of info about this one is that the list of activities that Krusty wouldn't do are all stunts that guest star Jonah Hill does in his movies. And my best moment was the prank that Andy Hamilton played on Skinner. That worm prank which you can see there. That was pretty cruel if you think about it. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This was a very inoffensive episode. That had a nice little look into Bart and what he really thinks about the prankster lifestyle. Most of the pranks played throughout the episode were. And it was good to get a glimpse at what Skinner and groundskeeper Willie were like in the past. Bart was mostly in character here. He is mischievous. But it also makes sense that he kind of has second thoughts after seeing Andy's lifestyle. The ending with the worms and Krusty being a planned bit was very predictable though. Marge's side plot was not great, but it does a good job of poking fun at overly protective parents. This episode was a little weak on humour for sure, although the trip to the overpriced natural supermarket was spot on. Overall, this was an episode which was propped up to being decent by its mostly engaging story. Season 21 Episode 7, Rednecks and Broomsticks After stumbling upon some teenage Wiccans, Lisa accepts an invitation to join their coven. Meanwhile, Homer starts to hang out with Cletus, after discovering that he makes moonshine. So my trivia here is that the split-screen montage featuring Homer and Cletus drinking is a reference to the film Sideways. The jazz tune played during this scene is also Wine Safari from the Sideways soundtrack, and my best moment was that Sideways parody. This one gets a 2 out of 5. This was not a story I cared about really. I mean I guess it was a nice change of pace for Lisa to let go of some of her scepticism and have more of an open mind. That said, they never really went anywhere with that angle. Lisa and the Wiccans simply don't have enough screen time together to get me to care about their relationship. Also the whole witch trial thing was a very cliche way to go and it ended things in a very predictable way but at least they managed to tie it in with Homer's redneck beer storyline. Much like the last episode, the comedy here was weak. Ned mistaking Lisa's Dell laptop for a hell laptop was the best we got in that regard. As I said though, the movie parody was quite well done, but it was nowhere near enough to make this a good or even average episode. Season 21, Episode 8 Oh brother, where Bart thou? After seeing Lisa and Maggie's special bond, Bart wants a brother. To get one, he goes to the orphanage, where a young boy follows him home. So my trivia for this one is that showrunner Al Jean chose Peyton Manning as a guest star after seeing his performance on an episode of Saturday Night Live. And my best moment was Bart imagining having three grown-up sisters. This one is a 4 out of 5. This was a very definition of a solid episode. It never reached massive heights. But it did have quite a few good moments, realistic dialogue and good characterization. Now I have two brothers and no sisters, the exact opposite to what Bart has, so for that reason I can't relate to him on a personal level here, but I can try and put myself in his shoes and yes, I can imagine being the only brother among sisters would present some interesting situations, especially growing up. So because of that, I can buy that Bart wants to have this brotherly bond. Charlie is a decent sympathetic character. It is cool how he and Bart warm to each other, and the middle of the episode of them just hanging out doing stuff was great. The ending to this episode was fine. Of course, Charlie was never going to end up sticking around, but it was interesting that he got adopted into a family with lots of sisters. As far as the jokes go, they were okay. None laugh out loud funny, but lots of ones which got my attention, whether it be referencing South Park, or referencing previous episodes with the Plow King. I also liked Skinner and Chalmers messing with Bart about the school closings. And as I said, Bart's nightmarish vision about what having three sisters would entail was pretty good. All in all, this was a very believable episode, which was fueled by its characters. Season 21, Episode 9, Thursdays with AB. A reporter takes an interest in Grandpa's stories, making him front page news. This makes Homer jealous, until he discovers the reporter's true intentions. Meanwhile, Bart and Lisa lose the classroom stuffed lamb. My trivia about this one is that the song playing during Abe's flashback is Chattanooga Choo Choo by Glenn Miller. And my best moment was just how attached Nelson was to Larry. This episode gets a 1 out of 5. Maybe this was a harsh rating, 
as there was nothing that stands out as offensively bad here. I just did not feel this episode at all. The idea of making Grandpa's rambling stories the focus of an episode was actually a decent one on paper. Sadly though, it completely fizzled out. The guy who I thought Abe had made a real connection with actually ended up trying to kill him. Not only was that plot twist unnecessary, it was also dumb. I mean, why does Abe even need to be dead for a guy to win an award anyway? The ending here was a bit of a mess. It was so over the top wacky with the chase on the train, and again, none of it did anything for me. The subplot about Larry the Lamb also left me feeling frustrated. It started out okay, actually. The kids taking turns to take something home like this is very relatable because it's something that a lot of elementary schools do in real life, so in that sense it worked well. I also like how Nelson was so attached to it, and now he threatened to unleash his dark side if it was harmed. Even though Bart and Lisa did end up harming it, Nelson sadly never got to fulfil his promise as the subplot was left unresolved. I mean, why even bother having a subplot at all, if there is no payoff to what you've set up? The jokes are boring as hell too, which kind of sums up this episode. This was not the worst one ever by any means, but it was still a one nonetheless. Season 21, Episode 10, Once Upon a Time in Springfield. Crusty is forced to add a character named Princess Penelope to his show, in order to attract more female viewers. Meanwhile, Homer, Lenny and Carl consider quitting when Mr. Burns cuts off their daily donuts. So my trivia here is that the opening chalkboard gag makes reference to the 2012 phenomenon, which stated that the world was going to end on December 21st, 2012. And my best moment was Mr. Burns tempting Homer, Lenny and Carl back with donuts. I gave this episode a 2 out of 5. I never really got into this plot at all. I mean, Krusty's show has had so many freshen ups by this point that I'm a bit numb to any new changes. The princess that comes in was a bit bland and did not really interest me, even if Anne Hathaway did a decent job of playing her. Bart and Milhouse's disturbed reaction to the new look show was the only good thing about it. There was no real depth behind Krusty's relationship with her and I was kind of waiting the whole time for when the inevitable happened and they broke up. Like kind of did happen, but then the ending kind of hints at them staying together. Although, I know for a fact that going forward, this is not actually the case. It makes this ending seem completely redundant in hindsight. Also, the best is yet to come message at the end was probably wishful thinking from the writer's behalf. The subplot does work a bit better than the main. I like how after initially banning Donuts, Burns ends up completely bringing them back in a desperate attempt to get Lenny, Carl and Homer to stay. The reason being, he needs them for the plant's tug of war team. Now that may be a flimsy reason, but it is so silly that I absolutely buy like it's something Burns would care deeply about. The resolution with him offering them two donuts instead of a health plan was a gag I found funny. However, the main plot did end up dragging this episode down for me, and although the subplot tried, it could not quite get this to a free. Season 21, Episode 11, Million Dollar Maybe. Homer skips the date with Marge so he can buy a lottery ticket which wins him a million dollars. However, he fears Marge's reaction to finding out, so he keeps the winnings a secret. So my trivia here is that the character named Ricardo who crashes his car was created by the winner of the Best Character Ever contest. This was a fan contest where the winner would have their character in an episode of the show. And my best moment here was the ending. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I guess it was only a matter of time until The Simpsons won the lottery, right? Yes, that's hardly an original plotline for a TV show on the face of it, and it does come across as a writer's lacking ideas. I did quite like the setup to it though, with Homer's rush to buy the ticket, and Marge's failed wedding toast. You know, that whole potato potato nonsense. Once Homer finds out he won the million dollars though, the plot loses me a little. For a start, I don't think he really needs to hide the fact that he won from Marge. I think we all know that she would instantly forgive him once she found out he won. The ending on a hot air balloon even confirms that. Because I didn't buy that aspect, the scenes of Bart blackmailing Homer just fell flat for me. So yeah, the main conflict of the story felt a tad forced here, but the sweet ending and Lisa's Nintendo Wii subplot go some way to making up for it. Overall, the jokes were okay here. I liked seeing Mr. Burns playing the Wii, and a piece of paper Homer wrote to Marge, saying, enjoy, like gumming. It was just the fact that she actually brought that that was from the government that makes the joke. Season 21, Episode 12, Boy Meets Curl. After discovering their love of curling, 
Marjan Homer get on the US Olympic team for the 2010 Vancouver Games. Meanwhile, Lisa develops an addiction to collecting Olympic pins. So, Homer describes Vancouver as Canada's warmest city. However, going by average yearly temperature, this is incorrect. It is actually the second warmest behind Victoria in British Columbia. And the best thing about the episode for me was the Olympic commentary. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I mean, this episode has its flaws for sure. I mean, for God's sake, it has Homer and Marge winning Olympic gold, so it's totally unrealistic. I was also not convinced by the whole Agnes and Skinner story. I mean, sure, it's fine for the series to be true to its word and forget all about the principal and the pauper. I just don't buy that she suddenly loves Skinner because there's no build-up put into it at all. Despite all the flaws, though, I think they still make this work. Indeed, I have liked this episode ever since I first saw it, over a decade ago. I think the main reason why I liked this was the characters. I may well have not been a fan of the Agnes stuff, but the characterization of the Simpsons family was well done. It was just nice to see Homer and Marge spend time together at first, and the transition to curling made a surprising amount of sense, given that Homer was the bowler and Marge was a sweeper. The actual scenes at the Olympics are fine, and the ending is a real feel-good type one. The subplot of Lisa's pin addiction is also better than you would expect. I like how Bart gets his own back on the manipulative salesman by creating a new pin based on Homer's picture. Another plus here was the jokes. They were pretty good, especially by this season's standards. As I said, I like the Olympic commentary here in general, but my favourite line was, this is a sort of bittersweet melodrama Olympic coverage feeds on. That was funny because it's true, if you actually watch Olympic coverage, they do do that kind of thing. Homer instantly leaving the theatre when he saw that Ben Affleck was in the movie was also well executed. In the end, this episode was definitely better than it looked on paper, and is one which I will always have a good time watching. Season 21, Episode 13, The Colour Yellow. While researching her family tree, Lisa finds the 1860 diary of Eliza Simpson, a young girl who is in the Underground Railroad and tried to help a slave escape to Canada. So much of this one is that the line where Homer tells Bart to march to Selma is a reference to the Selma to Montgomery marches in 1965, which was a civil rights protest marching from Selma, Alabama to the state capital in Montgomery. And my best moment was Willie and Bart blowing up the tree stump. This one is a 2 out of 5. So for starters, the decision to make the Simpsons part descendants from a slave was an interesting choice, and one which I'm not sure they would make nowadays. Now I know this episode is only just over a decade old, but let's be real. People's sensitivity over anything race related has increased exponentially in that time. That may be an uncomfortable topic for some people to talk about, but it is one which I know I will have to cover in this series at some point, with all the controversy surrounding certain characters and their voices. I will give you my honest opinion on that when the time comes, but that time is not now. As far as what I think about this particular episode, I didn't enjoy it really. I mean, the premise I was okay with. As the family pointed out at the end, it doesn't really matter too much who their ancestors were. Some may argue that it does not line up with continuity, but I can't recall this show ever going that far back in their family tree. Certainly not this deep into it anyway. So yeah, the main problem here wasn't the story itself, it was more that there was no funny moments here. That is why my best moment for this one was so mundane. I did quite like how the tree landed on Skinner's car, but still, it's not that great a best moment, is it really? The ending was fine, but it was also very coincidental that so many of the townspeople had diaries which interacted with the story so closely. List like contrivance in the plot, along with the lack of jokes, consign this episode to a 2 rating. Season 21, Episode 14, Postcards from the Wedge. When Homer and Marge find out that Bart is way behind in his studies, they disagree on how hard to be with him. However, the pair soon decide that they need to worry about themselves more than Bart. According to the painting in the subway station, the Springfield sign was originally built as Springfield Land, this is of course a reference to the Hollywood sign originally saying Hollywood Land. And my best moment was Homer and Marge's petty arguments about Bart's homework. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. For the first two acts of this episode, I was just enjoying the relaxed nature. They took the pacing a bit slower, and as such, it allowed Bart's feelings about Homer and Marge ignoring his pranks to build up over time. I did like how Bart realised that he needed a reaction to make his pranks worthwhile. That is something that hasn't really been explored before with him. His banter with Lisa was also great throughout the episode. I especially liked Lisa's line of, just close your eyes and think of Millhouse. 
In terms of the other jokes here, I also liked Homer getting the plates dirty again to get out of washing the dishes. As is typical lately though, some of the jokes were overextended. The third act of the story, with the subway, was also rather silly, and was what mostly let the episode down for me. It totally killed that relaxed vibe by trying to rush out some kind of high stakes finish. I was also not really a fan of the random ending with the family from the future. Overall, this was on the higher end of a three, as the characters all made sense, and there was a few good moments. However, the ending was not great, and it was lacking that certain special quality for me to really like it. Season 21, Episode 15, Stealing First Base When Springfield Elementary's two fourth grade classes have to share desks, Bart falls for his new desk mate. Also, Lisa gets advice on how to handle being an overachiever from Michelle Obama. So a bit of information about this one is that the vampire novel Nikki is holding is called Red Moon, and that is a parody of the Twilight series book New Moon. My best moment here was Nelson's friendship with the blind boy. Bar getting another girlfriend gets a 2 out of 5. I did not really enjoy either storyline here, to be honest. For a start, this plotline with Bart is becoming way overdone at this point. I liked last season's The Good, The Sad and The Drugly, but by comparison this was all over the place. There was just no flow to the story and the stakes were too low to get me to care. I guess Nikki was not the worst character in the world, because they did at least try to give her some personality, even if it was a bit of a crazy personality. It was not enough to justify another story like this so soon though. The Lisa plot was just very thin, hardly anything of substance there. Michelle Obama appearing also felt out of place and frankly pointless. The line about Skinner being the school's version of Joe Biden is a little funnier now that he's president though, I must admit. Other than that though, the jokes were up and down. I didn't like all of the drawn out kissing gags at various points in the episode, but I did like a few of Homer's lines, where he's at the school with Nikki's parents. The best thing going here though, is Nelson and the blind kid together. I like how Nelson is protective of him, but the blind kid also has some good lines, and even tricks Nelson in the end by pulling a ha ha on him. Still though, these charming scenes are not enough to make the rest of the story worth enduring. Season 21, Episode 16, The Greatest Story Ever Dode Ned invites the Simpsons to Jerusalem in an attempt to save Homer's soul. However, Homer defiles one of the sacred sites, which finally pushes Ned too far. Some trivia is that in Homer's vision in the desert, he sees a tomato, a carrot and a cucumber, and the way they're presented are parodies of characters from Veggie Tales. And my best moment was, look upon me and shudder, that quote from Homer. This one is certainly a 1 out of 5. Oh god, this episode was a train wreck. It had no flow, dumb characters, and at times it felt like the writers were going out of their way to piss off the audience. Why not start off with the low hanging fruit? That tour guide is the most annoying character ever in the history of the series. Simple as that. I thought the Seth Rogen character from earlier in the season was bad. This guy was on another level. There's just nothing redeeming about him. He only exists to shout in our face all the time. It would not be as bad if it was just a cameo, but he just keeps coming back. He gets an absurd amount of screen time. Homer is almost as bad. He's a complete idiot here, and is a total ass to Ned throughout. The only okay moment was his look upon me and shudder line, after he had delusions of being the messiah. The ending here also never had any impact, because the Ned and Homer relationship was so sour. It felt very forced and fake that Ned suddenly decides to forgive Homer after all of his nonsense. The setting of Jerusalem was also never really capitalised upon. It was just used as an excuse for more Homer stupidity. When all is said and done, this is perhaps the most annoyed I've ever been watching an episode of The Simpsons. And for that reason alone, this is one of the worst so far. Season 21, Episode 17, American History Excellent. When stolen paintings are found in Burns Manor, Mr. Burns is arrested. He asks Smithers to take over the plant in his absence. Meanwhile, Bart and Lisa bond over an ant farm. So this episode's title is a parody of the 1998 drama American History X. Just of course with Mr. Burns' catchphrase at the end. And my best moment here was Mr. Burns changing the weather on Smithers while narrating the story. This episode gets a 3 out of 5. It was certainly a different choice to tell this story mostly as a flashback, and it did work at getting me invested in seeing how Burns got chucked in jail. The reveal was done quite quickly though, so instead the story mostly became about how Burns was getting on in prison. That side of things grew a bit old, 
and the whole convert to religion thing fell a bit flat for me, mostly because it was so obvious that he would go back to normal in the end. The best thing here, story-wise, was Smithers. It was of course in character for him to be more lenient than Mr. Burns, but it is also totally understandable that he gets angry that his good nature was taken advantage of. I wish we got to see more of the Smithers stuff here, to be honest, as I was enjoying the dynamic between him, Homer, Lenny and Carl. Instead of fleshing that out more though, we got our time wasted by a Bart and Lisa story about ants. It added nothing in my opinion, and didn't even work as a fun break from the main story, because it was not funny. Outside of that though, there were a few okay jokes here. I did like Burns making it rain and snow on Smithers, while he was in control of the story. Santa's little helper eating the ants, and Homer mistaking the ants being dead, as Patty and Selma being dead, was also a decent moment. Season 21, Episode 18, Chief of Hearts. After getting to know each other during Homer's community service, Homer and Chief Wiggum become close friends. Meanwhile, Bart becomes addicted to a game called Battle Ball. So my truth of this one is that Lisa appears in this episode, but doesn't actually have any lines. This is the first time in the history of the show in which she does not speak. And my best moment here was Homer screwing around on a police computer. Homer and Wiggum becoming buds gets a 3 out of 5. This episode was fine, but it could and probably should have been better. On the face of it, a friendship between Homer and Wiggum makes perfect sense, and indeed they do form a very natural bond in this episode. I like the scene of Homer messing up while trying to delete his crimes off the computer, however I don't feel we got quite enough of the two just hanging out together. Instead it was all rushed to get to the third act conflict, which was Wiggum getting shot. I was not in love with that side of things to be honest. It just did not feel necessary to add those type of high stakes to this episode. The scenes of Homer waiting for Wiggum in the hospital were okay at least. The subplot of Marge mistaking Bart's toys as drugs was not particularly funny and felt a bit pointless. As far as the comedy here, it was along a similar line to this episode at large. There was some nice bits, but there was also a lot which flattered to deceive. Season 21, Episode 19, The Squirt and the Whale Having become frustrated with his electric bills, Homer gets a windmill generator, but when a violent storm hits, it not only destroys the windmill, it also beaches a whale which Lisa is determined to save. So my trivia here is that Bart's chalkboard gag reads South Park, we'd stand beside you if we weren't so scared. This is a reference to the controversy surrounding the 200th and 201st episodes of South Park, and my best moment was the montage of the wind turbine providing power. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I quite liked the episode overall, it just did a lot of things to get on my good side. To start off, the first act was pretty funny, and the idea of the Simpsons of all people getting a wind turbine and living off the grid was an interesting one. The song montage of Danger High Voltage was great, and there was a few good jokes relating to it. I especially liked the one about Homer and Apu both complaining that nothing is ever right with their wives. It took a while to find the game to the whale plot, but I think that was a good thing if anything, because let's face it, Lisa sitting by a beached whale is not really a plot line that you can drag out for that long. The bits we did get were done quite well though. Of course Lisa would be attached to this kind of thing, and when she woke up from her positive dream to the reality that the whale had died, it was an impactful moment. It was also good to see Homer's response to that. He really tried to comfort Lisa, and was willing to do whatever it took to support her cause. The ending here with the shark attacks and whatnot wasn't particularly great though, which was a bit of a shame. In fact, the third act in general seems to lose a bit of steam after all the emotional stuff in the second. The heart of this episode was definitely in the right place though, so I can forgive it for not always having the best execution. Season 21, Episode 20, To Surveil With Love Springfield has surveillance cameras installed throughout the town, but when Ned gets a job as a citizen video scanner, he takes the role too far. However, Bart soon discovers that the cameras have a blindness spot. So my trivia here is that the song played during the intro of this episode is TikTok by Kesha, and it was part of a promotion that Fox was doing at the time. My best moment here was the party at the blind spot in a Simpsons backyard. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. So first things first, the intro here was pretty controversial by all accounts. Some people think that it's basically the show setting out by having a whole intro devoted to a pop song, and although I can see that argument, I think it was alright for what it was. I also know that they do a lot more of this kind of thing in the future, so I may as well get used to it now, right? As far as the episode goes, it was certainly watchable, 
The main plot was solid, even if it was not very subtle. They do a good look into surveillance gone mad, and rightfully point out the madness in that. Ned was maybe a bit over the top at times, with it all, but at least he mellowed out in the end. The Lisa debate storyline was meh. The whole blonde hair stereotype thing felt like a bit of an odd route to go down, but it was fine I guess. The jokes were also fine. I did enjoy the bit with Duffman at Moe's, and seeing what all the characters got up to in a blind spot away from the cameras was also good. Not much else to say on this one. A solid but not spectacular episode. Season 21, Episode 21, Mo Letter Blues. Homer, Apu and Reverend Lovejoy embark on a trip with their kids on Mother's Day so their wives can have the day to themselves. But they get a message from Mo saying that he is leaving Springfield with one of their wives. So my trivia here is that the Itchy and Scratchy episode is a reference to the 1902 French short film A Trip to the Moon. And my best moment was that black and white itchy and scratchy cartoon. This one got a 3 out of 5. I really wanted to like this one more than I actually did. I mean you guys know by now that I do like these changes of format that the writers sometimes try. However, this was definitely a case of the concept being better than the execution. I mean it was kind of obvious that Mo was not going to run away never to be seen again. So that kind of made it inevitable that this would all turn out to be some kind of plan by him. The flashbacks of some moments from the characters' lives felt quite authentic though, and they did a good job of incorporating Mo in them. It at least left you wondering what the point of Mo writing that letter actually was. I guess you could argue that there was some mystery in that by itself. However, the conclusion to it all I was not entirely convinced by. I mean, would Mo really go through all this trouble just to try and teach his friends some kind of moral lesson? In fact, I think it would have been better if he really was trying to steal their wives, and that whole story was made up as an excuse. I think that would have been more believable for Mo. The jokes were as usual hit and miss. Homer setting off car alarms did not need to be shown for us to get the joke, and the Bart stuff on the rides was just pointless. A decent gag though was Homer trying to text while his phone was in the water, and as I said, the black and white movie style itch and scratchy was very well done. Season 21, Episode 22, The Bob Next Door. Bart is horrified when he recognises his new neighbour's voice as Sideshow Bob's. It turns out that it really is Bob who has switched faces with a man named Walter Warren, and he plans to murder Bart at the Five Corners. So this episode actually makes reference to the Icelandic economic crisis, which was ongoing at the time this episode aired. And my best moment about this was Bob singing all the Gilbert and Sullivan he damn well pleased. So was this episode as good as Bob's surgery? I'd say it was, yeah. I gave it a 4 out of 5. So I did like this episode, but it was very unrealistic, so you don't want to be taking it too seriously. I mean, the face switching is obviously ridiculous, but it comes across as so over the top that I can actually get on board with it. However, the bit about Walt not being able to tell anyone what happened, that was just contrived. So yes, Bob's plan was a bit silly, and you know of course that he would fail in the end. But to the writer's credit, they still ended up making this a fun episode to watch. There were some genuine tense moments here, and Bob felt much more back to his old self than he has been in his last few appearances. I love how enthusiastic he was with finally being able to sing Gilbert and Sullivan. The Five Corners plan was also quite crafty to be honest. The jokes here were fine. I liked Apu dealing with the shoplifter. And the ending bit with another Flanders family moving in was the best of the lot. In the end, unlike a lot of four episodes, this was not the most solid thing in the world. But I guess there, uh, on the strength of Bob himself and a few good moments. Season 21, Episode 23, Judge Me Tender. After judging a dog contest, Mo gains instant popularity. He is soon called up by Simon Cowell, who offers him a chance to join the American Idol panel. So this episode's title is a pun on the Elvis Presley song, Love Me Tender, and my best moment was Ralph Wiggum's thoughts on Simon Cowell. So the season finale gets a 3 out of 5. This was pretty much what you would expect from this type of episode. A lot of celebrities involved, going through the quick gags about Hollywood and stuff. I did think some of it was well done though, and the choice of Mo being this mean judge was a good one. I mean, let's face it, Mo is a very judgmental person, so it does make some degree of sense that he would excel at his job. The guest voices were all done well enough, 
and the little story going on in the background of Simon Cowell sabotaging Mo was quite well done. The Homer and Marge subplot was a bit boring at times because I did not find Homer's antics around the house to be enjoyable. No wonder Marge tried to get rid of him with golf. As someone who plays a bit of golf, I can attest to it being a bit addicting. Who knows, maybe when I'm older, I will be fully hooked and be like the old man in this episode. I guess I should also mention that Lisa had an unnecessary scene with Santa's little helper. I get that they were trying to wrap up the ugly thing from earlier. I just don't think that it needed to be wrapped up. At least the jokes here were okay in the main, which topped this up to a three. I laughed at Rolf having to be beeped while giving his opinion on Simon, and the band candy gag running throughout the episode was also decent. So that is The Simpsons Season 21 done. And here is what I thought of the season. The overall average score was a 2.82, which is the worst for a while and the second lowest so far, which isn't particularly good, is it? My bottom five was... Stealing first base was 5th, the colour yellow was 4, rednecks and broomsticks was 3, Thursdays with AB was 2, and the greatest story ever doed comfortably gets the number 1 spot. As far as a fab 5 from the season, Oh Brother Where Bart Thou was in at 5, The Bob Next Door was 4, Treehouse of Horror 20 was 3, The Squirt and the Whale was 2, and My Guilty Pleasure, Boy Meets Carol was 1. As far as my overall thoughts on this season go, as you might have guessed, I did not enjoy it that much. I mean, the rating shows that. It is actually joined with Season 17 as the second lowest so far. Despite the identical average though, I would actually have no hesitation about ranking this one below Season 17. At least that season had a few great episodes. This one, following on from last year, once again has zero 5 rated episodes. Now, I said in the last video that I was not getting too concerned yeah, scratch that, I'm now starting to get worried. These HD episodes just don't have it in them to get to that next level at the minute. Occasionally you will have an interesting plot, but even then, they rarely take full advantage of it. The biggest problem though by far is the jokes. There was not one episode in this season which I would call consistently funny. I mean, there were a few good gags here and there, but they are buried beneath tons of mediocre ones. In fact, it got so bad, that I was actually struggling to pick out my favourite moments here in some of these episodes. That has never really happened before up until this point. So yeah, sorry for the negative assessment of this season guys, but it's not really one I can recommend. If you want one positive thing about it, then it's still more consistent than season 11, and as such I rate it higher. So for now at least, season 11 remains the worst. However, if these trends continue, then it is only a matter of time until it gets overtaken. There is nothing of note to report on the characters here in my opinion, although they did a good job of giving a wide variety of side characters spotlight episodes. Mo, Krusty, Ned, Skinner, and even Wiggum got one here. In terms of the themes on show, this one was less down to earth than season 20, and instead had more pop culture references and things like that. If anything, that makes the lack of funny moments here even more unforgivable. But hey, I have to try and rein myself in a bit, we still have so much of the HD era to go. Thank you guys for watching as always and helping me through these seasons. Your support is appreciated and probably necessary if I am ever going to finish this series. I do have a bit of positive news for you guys though to end on. I have started working on a top 20 list for my favourite episodes of The Simpsons since you guys requested it in the comments. Now just a heads up, it won't be done for a while yet, but I will drop the video as a surprise at some point in the future. Anyway, I'm Ala here. I hope you guys can join me next time for season 22. Thanks for watching and take care.